Okay, so far we've been talking about simplifying a system where a rigid body is subject to well, several discrete forces. Okay, a discrete right, means they're individual. Okay, forces apply at specific locations. Okay, so this force okay, has a, has a finite number. Okay, now this force is in some other number, okay, and direction, right, and this force is separate, right? So discrete forces, right, the so discrete system. And that can be reduced to, say, one single force and, you know, a couple moments, okay? So that's the, uh, you know, the last couple of topics. Now, sometimes in engineering, an object, let's say a bridge, okay, or a building, that the wall of the building, can be subject to forces that is not like this, not discrete forces, but instead it's continuous forces, like a blanket forces, right? Continuously applied forces or pressure, okay? Uh, say on the uh, surface of the bridge, okay? Um, this, this pressure, okay, is being applied okay, continuously. Okay, due to maybe a um, say wind, okay, um, or or let's say water, okay, on the a side of a dam. So water, okay, we create a pressure, okay, at different locations, okay, a continuous location on the wall, right? So it's in this case, it's no longer discrete because you know, this force, uh, this pressure right here, okay, it's not applied at individual location, but instead it's continuous, okay? So, take this for example, okay? Now this is, say, just any, uh, any um, metal object, okay? Say a floor um, of a bridge, okay? It's subject to this continuously uh, varying pressure, P, okay? Now, this is called con distributed loading. Okay? Distributed, okay, as in this pressure, right, is distributed along the length okay, of this rigid body. Okay? And it may or may not be uh, constant pressure. Okay? In fact, most of the time, it's not constant. It has some kind of shape, right? So that's why I can uh, come up with this profile. Okay? So if I define that uh, X axis is the um, horizontal uh, direction, okay, at this point O, okay, just as a reference. I have this pressure profile that's being applied, okay, so at this location, at point O, I have pressure is so much, Newton per meter square, okay, and then as we go along, let's say at this point, okay, I maybe you reach the highest pressure, and then it comes down again, and things like that, so it can be anything, any, any shape, okay and magnitude at different locations, right? So this is just one uh, example. Okay, so pressure has a general definition of force per unit area, okay? This is just general definition, okay? So the force, okay, it's constant force, okay, applied at a certain area. So, okay, you, you take this ratio, it gives you pressure, okay? Now this pressure is a function of x, okay? It varies in the x direction only, okay? So it doesn't change in the y direction. Let's say this is my y direction going there, okay? So let's say this little section of bridge has a width of b, let's say, okay? So since this b is constant and pressure in the y direction is also the same, okay? So I can actually multiply this pressure by B, okay? So I have P times B, okay? That actually would give you another profile, this green profile right here, which will have the same shape as this because I just multiplied this P by a constant B, okay? Now this now becomes more well, pressure times length, right? The so unit of pressure is Newton per meter squared. Now, when you multiply this by meter, so the unit of pressure times a length is Newton per meter, okay? Force 
per length. I'm just call it W. Okay. Just call it W. So this can be thought of as force per unit length. Okay. So W, now keep in mind that this pressure is a function of X. So therefore W is also a function of X. Okay? And it has a profile like this also. Alright? Now, knowing that this okay, is a force per length, per unit length, okay, it has a shape like this. So from the previous discussion so far, for any given force, a okay, system of forces, we can always reduce down to one single force. Similarly here, this is just continuously changing forces, okay? An infinite number of forces here, okay? Same thing, we can also come up with one single resultant force. This guy right here, that represents the effect of this distributed force, okay? What well, force per length that is, okay? So, now to, to go from W, that is force per length, to a force, resultant force, okay, apply at some point, okay, so that these two pictures are equivalent, then we need to do an integration, okay. Now, this is force per length, right, so, so this is like F per L, right, except now, okay, this force right here, okay, force at every point is different, okay, it's not a constant, right, so this is changing. Right. Now length is the x coordinate. Okay. So therefore, the total okay, f f r this right here. Okay. We cannot use this equation now, okay, as before, because before we have a separate discrete force that we can just sum them up. That's all. But now we cannot do this summation sign. Okay. But instead the continuous equivalent of sum in calculus is simply integration. Okay? The so integral of this guy right here, W. Okay, W again is the function of X. Okay, so W X. Now this does not mean W times X, okay? Uh, very important. This means W as a function of X. So, since W is force per length, force per length, so going from force per length to force, you need to multiply that by length, which is exactly dx. Okay? So you integrate this force per length okay, with respect to dx length. That will give you force. Okay? So, as simple as that. So what are function that is, okay? If you know this shape right here, right? Um, then you can do the calculation, okay? So just integrate, okay, and go from there, okay? Now another thing to notice is that if you look at this shape right here, and look at this definition, okay? This is wx, dx. W at any location x, let's say this location x right here, okay? So this is my x location at this point. So at this point, I have a w of this much. Okay. So at this very location, okay, I have the magnitude of w is wx. When you integrate yeah, wx, which was the x, okay, you would take a small little section, small little tiny section of. So this guy right here. Okay. An infinite infinite decimal section. Okay. So this has the same meaning as okay, taking this length right here, which is W, multiplied by this little width DX. When you multiply this by that, that gives you a little area. The 
this little area right here. Okay. And when you integrate this area from x equals 0 to all the way to the right, to the end of this, okay, this ridge body, that will sweep the whole area under the curve. Okay. So this integral is also equal to the area under the curve. Okay. So it's the integral of dA. That's it. Simple as that. So when you do the integration, this is exactly the area under the curve. Okay, under this curve. All right. So the shaded area. Okay. So graphically, it has this, this meaning. Right. So with this integration, uh, you can find the resultant force. Okay, the magnitude of the resultant force. Okay, so this will give you how many newtons in SI unit. Okay. Now, next question is, where is this force applied? Okay, can we find the location of this force FR? Okay. What is this X right here? Okay. Instead of calling just X, okay, since this FR is kind of special, it's the single, one single resultant force that represents this distributed loading. I'm going to call this X, X bar. Okay. Pardon the dog. So X bar, okay, is the next unknown we need to find. Okay, where exactly is this FR being applied?